How's your jaw? Is the pain bad? Look, Gabe, I'm really sorry. I... I don't think Gabe is a judgmental person. He's been to juvie too. He knows what it's like to grow up from a bad place, so I don't think he's gonna judge us too poorly for, you know, being a sister protecting her brother. It's not that big of a deal. Would like to know what he's really thinking though. Did you rehearse that move? No. Only in my mind. <laughs> so, need a manager for your underground cage fighting career? Gabe, okay, I'm really sorry. How many bones have you broken? Like, on other people? Dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Don't apologize. I'm fine. Now that we're talking about it... Guess I never realized. I think we're feeling insecure right now. That I'm a crazy person? No, come on. I never realized what your life must have been like. On, on your own. It was fine. You know, when I pulled you off the Mac and you hit me, I, I was angry. Then I thought about how you took him apart. Like you've done it before. Exactly. Yeah, but you know, you're his little sister, his baby sister. He's always gonna think about you as someone he wants to protect, right? Didn't you go to juvie? Isn't that, like, prison? Sorry, I read your stuff. Yeah. That was the hardest time in my life. Some days that... I didn't think I'd make it out. But I get the feeling you've been through worse. I can tell there's something going on with you. Something troubling you. Maybe it's time you open up. I want to talk to Gabe, but what can I even say right now to explain what happened with Mac? Is this really that big of a deal? Because if someone's hitting my brother and I'm not I'm not like a weak, physically weak person, I would want to defend him, right? But I think Gabe probably realized that something is weird because before I started hitting Mac, I fell on the ground and I like, you know, retreated and all that too. So that part was a little bit unusual. Oh, interesting. Okay, my past is why I've gone through all these experiences, but my power is sort of like the main reason here, because that's the really uncommon part, right? <sighs> but remember our texts? The last time we tried telling somebody, they ghosted us. But I want to trust you, Gabe. My only family. There's something off about me. I know what other people are feeling. I can see these 
auras around them. And if they feel strongly enough, if they're angry or sad or afraid, I feel it too. And then I lose control. And this has happened? For a long time. Like Mac. I felt all that anger like it was my own. I think it was pretty clear that Mac was angry. It's more than that. He wasn't just angry at you. He's angry at himself. He thinks he's going to lose Riley. Did Riley tell you that? Of course not. No. No one told me that. I just... feel it. Sure, it's not just, you know. It's not just in my head, Gabe. I promise. It's not from meds or stress or trauma or whatever. It's real. Can you tell what I'm feeling right now? I think this is probably why the previous person ghosted Alex too, because I guess if you're told this, the first thing you think of is, you know, are you reading my mind? Do you know what I'm thinking without me telling you? That's really scary. You're invading my privacy. It doesn't work like that. It's only when you feel really strong emotions. Oh. I don't expect you to believe me. No one does. So you can actually feel what other people are feeling? Yes. You're like going inside their heart. I guess I am. Dude, you have superpowers. Getting beat up and having no friends. That's a super curse, dude. Okay, okay, maybe superpowers is a bit strong. It's just... I have no idea what's going on with people half the time. Charlotte's teaching me how to improve my emotional intelligence, but this, this is on another level. You can get in there, I mean, that's... That's really special. But no one's ever told her that. Okay, this is just like complete pessimism. This may be a ray of hope that maybe this is not just a curse, maybe it's a gift. Special. That's really your take on all this? Totally. I mean, it's whatever you make it, right? But it doesn't matter what's going on. I'm here for you. Don't forget that. Oh. I want the big brother too. So, when were you going to tell me about the guitar? Oh, shit. You found it. It was supposed to be a huge surprise. Surprise? <laughs> well, what do you think? I love it. Thank you so much. Of course. Welcome home. Oh, hey, dude. What's up? Hey. Is Ethan up here? Oh no. No, he was heading home. He was, but I haven't seen him in a while. 
Oh no, oh no, oh no. You don't think... Maybe? Fuck, maybe he did. What is it? I think he went up to the mountains. If he actually did, we need to move. Now. Let's go. I thought we told his mom already, and he... He was grounded and going home and all that. Oh, it's nighttime already. That's not good. It happens at 9 p.m. The blasting. Typhon. Ethan? Ethan! Pick up, pick up. Alex. This way. Wait, what about his mom? Have we not told her? She's busy today, right? That's why he had to be left at home. Wow. Been a while since I was up here. Should I be... I don't know... Freaking out right now? In my experience, freaking out is almost never advisable. Any luck? In touch base with the safety team up at the site. They're gonna postpone tonight's blast until we find them. Oh, at least we're not racing the clock. Hey, you good? Charlotte's gotta be losing it right now. Hey, she's tough. Always has been. Come on, let's take a look around. This kid. Can you imagine the shit we would have caught from Dad if we'd done anything like this? Hey, we're gonna find him. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Hey, thanks again for your help. Could have been a lot worse if you hadn't kept me in the loop. Of course. I'm gonna go take a look around. Let me know if you spot any sign of Ethan. Sure. I can do that. How was Ethan planning to get into the mine? Is it blocked off, in particular? Something tells me those two weren't the best match. One of your neighbors has changed their relationship status. Riley Leif is now single. Proud of you, sweetie. Ouch, Mac. Mazeltoff. Hmm. Excited to announce we now have a new addition to the Black Lantern staff. Happy to have you, Alex. Landed a job on my first day. Maybe this fresh start is still salvageable. Hey, maybe you could even teach Gabe a thing or two. Hey, she could teach me way more than two things. She's a good sport. Glad you're finally here, Alex. Oh god, Typhon Mining. Official two-hour warning. Typhon Mining will be detonating charges in two hours. If you are in a marked danger zone, you must begin clearing out now. Call our 24-hour safety line with any questions or... Uh, of concerns. Of course. No replies allowed. Something that they've been mentioning a little bit here and there. Oh, hold on. Groves Theater. Which was the best Living Dead movie? Night, Day, Land? Kevin has an indie movie theater. Impressive. It's so artsy here. Diary? Come to our Marathon of the Dead to watch them all and decide for yourself. Tickets are $15 online and $22 at the door. Stupid debate. Dawn of the Dead was obviously the best. Have you even seen Survival of the Dead? Nope, and neither has anyone else. I don't think Land of the Dead gets enough credit. Let's face it, none of the sequels lived up to Night of the Living Dead. Literally, how dare you? Oh, dear God, what have we done? <laughs> uh, somebody texted us personally as well. Ducky. Dear Alex, it was very much my pleasure meeting you this evening. I hope you find a welcoming home here in Haven. I look very much forward to our next meeting. Sincerely, Reginald McAllister III. Thank you, Ducky, that's very sweet. 
Yeah, something that's been coming up on and off a bit is um, our dad. Earlier back in the pub, they were saying, you know, they were saying that Gabe and dad used to fight a lot. And just now Gabe was saying that dad is really strict. So, you know, I don't know, something, something Asian parents, blah, blah, blah. Did they abandon us or how do we... Are they dead? Anyway, we have more pressing problems here. Nope. 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 Super nope. <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna start somewhere, okay? The last one, easiest to change, maybe. Oh dear. Will we though? No trespassing! This area is the private property of Typhon Mining. Only authorized Typhon personnel are permitted. Violators will be prosecuted. Cool. A murder barn. Don't say that. We, we've had some of those before. <laughs> Ethan, you can go on literally any other day, okay? Just not the blasting day. Like... <sighs> Whoa, is that somebody... Oh, it's a scarecrow or something. Maybe Julie McNamara doesn't need your approval. Yeah. What she said. My joyride in this will have to wait until after we found Ethan. Do we want to try, like, yelling out loud? It's pretty dark here. He has to have a light or something. You don't realize until you're up close, but mining equipment is super murdery. Stop. The real monster here is underage drinking. Hey, bro. Wanna get wasted at the old mine? Hey, bro, wanna look for bottles at the old mine? How is the rubber zombie the least creepy thing out here? They were gonna set off charges tonight. Thank God Gabe got a hold of them. Oh, I thought he was gonna notify the people. He did already. Okay, that's reassuring. Ethan didn't seem like a troublemaking sort of kid. Like, I don't know why he had to pick this one day, of all days. It's pretty beaten up. Wonder what happened to it. Dead miners. Ooh. Wow. Once Ethan's safe, I'll raise one too. We raise our drinks to Jed Lucan, who, at this location on December 30th, 2008, pulled us out of hell. Ah, oh, that saving 19 lives thing? It was some sort of a mining-related thing? Wait. Imagine being trapped down there. Or, actually, don't. Investigate whereabouts. Okay. Alex warned me. I could have stopped this. I'm such a fucking fucker. Gabe cares about Ethan so much. We have to find him. Come on, Ryan. Everyone is depending on you. Ryan won't let his fear get in the way. I'm glad he's here. Ah, two people with the same, same uh, basic emotion, but manifesting in different ways slightly. Like, Gabe is very, very worried, but Ryan is... he has a very strong sense of duty. Probably not as fun to ride in as they look. Even if I was calm before, just hearing this might make me more anxious. That's just the nature of this whole power. What happened here? Massive cave-in. Bunch of trapped miners. All nearly died. Jed led the whole team back to the surface. God. Yeah, that's the day Foreman Jed became local hero Jed. And then Typhon closed up this site, basically bought Jed the Black Lantern. Well, Typhon's been around for a long time then. Huh. 
I thought they just came into town or something. Oh! Same logo. Did Ethan base his comic on this place? Oh, that makes sense why he'd want to come here. For inspiration ideas. Okay. Okay. If the wall is an illusion... The zombie and the campfire. Blood? The trail seems to end here. Oh, there's a crack in the wall somewhere, maybe. From the zombie? Perhaps if I can reach higher ground, I can find the secret entrance. Let's see. Nothing obvious. Maybe we should... Notice anything? No shit. I'll be damned. The whole story is about Ethan's character breaking into a monster stronghold deep underground. Sounds like the mind of me. Does it show where he went? Not sure. The comic ends with the monster hunter climbing a watchtower, which shows him where to go. There. The silo. I bet that's the tower. That's where he went. You're a genius. Yeah. Great find, Alex. Gabe, you want to take a crack at unlocking that gate? I'm on it. We should also be able to get to it through the processing building. If we can find a way in. Let's take a look, then. Okay. Ethan based his comic on this place. Maybe I should compare his drawings with other stuff in the area. Such as the zombie? But there's no trail coming from it. That'd be too obvious. So if the zombie is here, then... The uniform of a city guard, long dead from the looks of it. Blood? Blood goes here. Hollow. So from the zombie, there's a trail of something that leads to the gate, is the sense I'm getting. If Ethan really followed the path in his comic, finding him just became a lot more doable. Oh, it's not a gate. It might be that thing over there. I don't think so. Thanor follows the trail away from the campfire. Alex warned me. I could have stopped this. I'm such a fucking fucker. Gabe's on the gate. I should see if I can make sense of the comic. Comic nerd powers. Great job, Alex. Guessing you're the same? Come on, Ryan. Everyone is depending on you. Follow the steps. Okay. Let me know if you find anything, yeah? Oh, we gotta remember a little bit because we can talk to people too. Sometimes if you do the other one, then like if you try to look at their emotions, it doesn't say you can talk to them, and it's really easy to forget. Any luck? It's been a minute since I tried to break a lock. I've lost my edge. <laughs> what, what you told me before. If he were out here and like feeling something, could you use it to find him? He'd have to be feeling it, like, a lot. Like, really strong. Even then, I don't know. Guess it was worth a shot. Hmm. At this point, in this area, I'd rather not find him that way, because what if he's really scared? Because then something bad might have happened to him. So, did Ethan? Oh, man. He didn't climb the, um, the thing, did he? He went around it. I think there's like a side door back there. I don't know. I guess there might be. Give me a hand. 
You figured that out from a comic book. I'm gonna try to get the lights on. You try to figure out where Ethan went. If he's around here, I feel like he should have heard us already. Ethan must have come through here. How did he get out? Have I got some good news for you. <laughs> when was it legalized in... Uh, where are we right now? Colorado. Hmm. I mean, it, it seems like a slim chance, but... What? I don't know. I am not making that choice for you. Have you seen any action movie? Guess it's up to me then. Blue it is. Oh god. Yeah, that did exactly nothing. Okay. See? Glad I abstained. Oh yeah. These look safe. Yes, the stairs. Ethan must have gone upstairs. Pretty sure Ethan climbed these stairs. Okay, but then how did he get out of here? Not sure. I'm gonna have a look. Kind of want to push all the buttons. Also, kind of scared to push any of the buttons. Ew. Ugh. Let's hope omens aren't really a thing. Oh my god, why is it like that? It just looks like it's been mutilated. Oh! This is a find. Ugh. Worse than sleeping on the ground. Oh, I thought maybe Ethan would have like, I don't know, this was his little hub or something, but there was a lot of beer here. Nope. Thanor doesn't battle any bed bugs. So much stuff just left behind. It's probably the same stuff. Yeah, it was worth a shot, I guess. Ethan must have passed through some other way. Let me see what I can figure out. This thing has seen better days. I'm not confident this is gonna work. Ow! Oh. Damn it. Be careful, be careful. No, we we know what's next. If Ethan didn't get out through the door, how did he get out? He went upstairs. Oh, Ethan, you're gonna be in so much trouble once everybody finds you. And we better find you. We better find you. Your mom's worried sick. Scary old building. Please don't collapse while we're inside you. Thanks. Now there's a bigger chance that the blasting will happen randomly anyway, because it was scheduled for tonight. Like, that thing is not over, okay? They wouldn't say that and then be like, oh, okay, we cancelled it, so we have to be careful here. Maybe it's full of Twinkies. Those never go bad, right? That's not a good sign, I don't think. Like, food never going bad? Food is supposed to go bad. If it doesn't, something's wrong with it. Something tells me I'm gonna need a tetanus shot after all this. Boy, Gabe is still working on the gate outside. Hmm. 
The cloud serpent. What could be an analogy for that? Okay, I'll stay out, but not because you told me to. <laughs> Wasn't in the comic. Yeah, but I wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> We passed caution like an hour ago. Are the police coming then? Is somebody coming? Because apparently they've called off the blasting, so they know there's a kid missing. Not in the comic. Okay, a window is probably how he got out. He went up the stairs. He can find a secret entrance. Oh god. Reminds me of the snake thing in Ethan's comic. <gasps> Are you serious? The cloud serpent? Oh my god. The silo. We're getting close. Child, you worry everybody around you. Yeah, he went on top of it. Oh my god, to go to the silo! Ethan made the jump from here to the conveyor belt? Oof. Think I'll find another way through. I'm sorry, can I just press space and- Looks like Ethan climbed the conveyor belt out to the silo. Yikes! Sorry, I forgot to press space that whole time, so it was just... there. <laughs> Maybe there's some way to open the door. Worth a shot. Heads up! You figured out the door! Yeah. Turns out you gotta open it. Who knew? Will wonders never cease? But we're a little bit too old to be doing the whole, like, you know, parkour thing. So we're gonna take the other way. So this place was a death trap when it was operational too. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Do not stand on conveyor belt. Standing on and or riding a moving conveyor belt can result in injury or death. Typhon mining is not legally liable for medical costs incurred by employees who use conveyor belts improperly. And we don't have any protective gear, so that's wonderful. Oh boy, oh boy. Gabe, you want to come over this way? I think we are onto something. Brian seems like he knows what he's doing. Glad he's here. Oh, hey. What took you so long? You never forget how to break a lock. It's like riding a bike. Where to next, Alex? He... that glow beyond the peak, that must be the stronghold's back gate. Well, he went to the building, right? looks out from the watchtower and spots the secret entrance to the stronghold. If we can just... There. That's where he's heading. That's vague. That's by the ravine. Shit. Let's go. Dude, why is a kid, like, choosing to do this at nighttime and all that? Oh my god. Close? I think so. 
Ethan! 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 Ethan? You okay? Don't worry, we're gonna get you out of here. Just hang on. Oh, this is Tree Cop specialty. Oh my god! No! Don't, 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 don't! His fear is so strong. If I get near it... It's no good. Oh no! You're too heavy. No, 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 no. Shit. You know where this is going. What about me? Alex. Uh, are you sure? No. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Remember how I taught you how to anchor a belay? Awesome. Show me. So did he go across and he's too scared to walk back? You okay? Honestly? No. And that feeling makes sense. Do me a favor though. See if you can breathe. Great. As long as you keep doing that, everything's gonna be fine. Ryan is so calm. Alex, can you make eye contact with me? I'm gonna tie this rope around your waist. The other end is tied around your brother. What? He'll use that stump as a fulcrum to feed rope your direction. Follow? So far. Awesome. You're doing super good. Remember, Slow is steady. Steady's fast. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Did he fall off something? That kind of that little twig there kind of looks like like I don't know if it was there to begin with or what's going on here. Hang on, Ethan. I'm coming. You got this, Alex. Go back! You'll get hurt! I'm not gonna get hurt, and neither are you. What if you're wrong? Well, I'm not. Ethan, I'm here to help, okay? No! Get away! What's wrong? Shit. It's too much. I have to get him to chill out. <sighs> Ethan, I need you to calm down. Can you breathe for me? I should never have come out here! I was so stupid! Okay, hey, hey, focus. Talk to me. You want to tell me how you got out here? I was trying to cross to the other side. The log fell. That's fine. That's okay. Let's talk about what comes next. Kid, I'm standing on a log. Gabe's got us. We're not gonna fall. He's got the other end of the rope. 
No, I can't move. If I move, you're not gonna fall, buddy. It doesn't matter. He's not making any sense. I need him to calm down. We can't stay here, Ethan. We have to. It'll see me. If I move, it'll see me. What's gonna see you? You don't understand. He's right. I don't. I can't help him if I don't understand what he's afraid of. And the only way to understand is to feel what he's feeling. Oh, fuck. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, my lord. Are you gonna be okay, Alex? I can do this. I can do this. Is he afraid of a monster from his comic? That's such a dangerous thing. I brought all this I stuff. Brought all this stuff. None, None of it will save me. Save me. Ninth Warden would it be afraid? But he's just a story. This is real. Okay. He's not afraid of the fall. He's afraid of... Oh, shit. Can't let it see me. Can't let it see me. It can't be real. Oh, but it looks pretty fucking real. Hey. Hey, I see it too, Ethan. The monster? I see it too. And I'm just as scared as you are. Ethan, we're safe. You know why? It can't see me. Bangle of vanishing, just like Ninth Warden. Ah. I thought that was just a story. Hell, some stories are true, like monsters. So, you're gonna hold my hand, all right? As long as you're touching me, you're safe. Don't look down, okay? We'll be done before you know it. They're headed back. Keep tight on the belay, Gabe. <laughs> Not over yet. Oh, God. Okay. One step at a time. You are doing so good, Alex. So good. Two. But we can do this. One step at a time. Okay. Do you think the log will break? Don't worry. I got all the way across before, remember? It could still break! Shit. Don't. We're halfway through. there. What? Ethan, 
how even though the distance we've been slowly coming back but the log feels longer we're still in ethan's world that's it come on there you go i got you oh oh my god i feel like that too I just want to lay on the ground. <laughs> you did it, Alex! You're so good! You did it! You used your powers for good. And you overcame your fear. What? No! What? No! Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Okay, let's go. Oh! oh shit! Shit! I knew that was a bad idea. No, 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 no! No, no. 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 <sighs> the one person, the one person we opened up to. Oh shit, I was so I was so happy about what we just did too. I had so many things to say about that before. Like, I was gonna say all sorts of stuff about how, oh, we overcame it, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I'm just left with this, like, dread and anxiety in my chest now. It's like I'm feeling what Alex and Ethan are feeling, too. Oh. Okay, okay. I mean, we already know. Like, <sighs> We already know what the outcome's gonna be. Alex told Gabe about Ethan's plans, 53%. Half and half. Hmm. Okay. Alex told Riley the truth about the fight. Yeah, most people weren't convinced enough by Mac to not do it. Mac, it's not like insecurity makes you a bad person, but maybe it means you're not suitable to be with somebody until you're, you know, not like that because you're just... That's just not going to fly with anybody right now, what you're doing. Alex told Gabe about her power, most people did, instead of the th stuff about growing up in foster care, which Alex probably, or uh, Gabe, Gabe can probably imagine already. Alex hugged Gabe on the bridge. Yes, 97, that's what I want to say. Alex advised Riley to show off in her interview. I, I suspect that I would be in the minority here, but not like a huge minority. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not a half and half sort of thing. If you asked me, should we be honest or should we lie, then I would tell you, let's be honest, but I'm curious to see how this will manifest. Alex put cool sunglasses on the gnome, 90%. Alex enjoyed a song in the record store, 66. Alex told Ryan that Gabe was a dork, 48. Or a badass, 52. Badass has a bigger hint of, like, really looking up to your brother, whereas dork, to me, sounds a little bit like we're closer. 
Alex rocked out with Gabe on the broom guitar. Mm -hmm. Of course, 96. Alex found evidence of Gabe's search for her, 96. Ooh, this last one here. Pretty split evenly. Alex expressed optimism, 37. Pessimism, 24. Wasn't sure. Majority choice. Most people would prefer to be unsure or optimistic. I think as a general rule of thumb, it does feel like people would rather try to be optimistic. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good rule of thumb. Hmm, Alex told Judge she's never been a server. Alex went along with Gabe's story. This one half and half leaning towards being honest. Most people, I also feel like most people prefer being honest. Yeah, because that's easier. When you start lying, you gotta make up more lies to cover up your previous lies and all that, so it's not great. Alex told Gabe she loves a guitar. Yeah, yeah, 97. Some of these are pretty undisputed. Jed was impressed with Alex's performance as a server. 89. Jed was not impressed. 1%. Jed figured out that Alex had never been a server before. So right now, he's impressed with us, thinking that it's because we've been one before. We have experience. Versus maybe you could have been more honest and then still do well. And then maybe, maybe he would have been more impressed that way too, because you actually didn't have any experience to begin with. 42, 42, 16. Steph lost to Alex in the jukebox game. Or Steph could beat Alex. Yeah. And then this one is just the same, the opposite of the one about Mac. It's not just about Mac though. Like Riley having to put up with this stuff seems really unfair to her too. Ducky was reunited with his favorite whiskey. Yeah. Okay, my friend's stats, we can see. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I don't know how many people on my friends list are playing right now. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Um. That was pretty intense, that whole scene. Even though choice-wise, it didn't feel like you could fail. But yeah, it was, it was really intense. And I'm so happy to see that Alex was able to um, use her power for something positive for once, and that she was able to um, break out of thinking it's a curse purely, too, because really, without her power, I'm not sure how old Ethan is, but what he was saying really wasn't making any sense anymore, and without being able to understand what he's feeling, trying to talk him down would have been very, very difficult. But Gabe... <sighs> like, it just happened. But why did the blasting go off? I thought he called it off already. Okay, well, uh, unlike the previous Life is Strangers, this one, the entire game came out all at once, so we don't have to wait for the next chapter, which also kind of means we don't have a preview for the next chapter, so when we come back, we will begin chapter 2 and find out what happened then. Hey, before we move on, I missed two collectibles in chapter one, and we can read stuff about it, right? So we should probably pick them up earlier rather than later. It's pretty beaten up. Wonder what happened to it. Right, I forgot that you can... Yes, we gotta do this periodically to just see the colors around us. I got you. I got you. It's okay. You're okay. Oh, God. Oh god, we're alive! Uh. Helldiver. Is that everybody? I need a head count! Jed was terrified, but he kept his cool and saved lives. I guess that's what makes him a hero. Alex says something different before and after looking at the helmet, too. Let's see here. Memories. Jed. So much happening at once. A fear that blacks out the edges of your vision, turns off parts of your brain, so that all you know is the pounding of your own pulse in your ears, and the gut-deep drive to claw your way out. As soon as Jed saw daylight, that fear urged him forward, wanted him to run for home and leave the mind behind. He resisted it, clamped his jaw closed until his teeth ached, and turned to pull the others out. Oh, fuck. I don't think I've ever been that brave. Telling you from the future, Alex. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Maybe you didn't save 19 people, but hey, these things aren't about the amount, right? So this is kind of interesting then, because it says that, like, this happened a very long time ago, right? And the motions are still in the helmet, so there's no time limit on this, I guess. Ethan must have come through here. 
how did he get out? I'm 100% sure that if I picked up the receiver, there'd be like a demon voice on the other end. <laughs> Want to find out? Anne, you okay? I'm sorry to call you at work. I just came home from the doctor. I couldn't wait for you to come home. Baby doll? I, I'm pregnant, Jed. Oh. And then that's how... It's all about Ryan, then. Phone. Sometimes, you can just feel the gravity of what someone is about to tell you before they say a word. It's in the way they breathe, the empty space they use to choose their words. You start to feel afraid because you know that whatever they're about to say, it's going to change everything. And that moment lasts a million years. And then your wife says, I'm pregnant, Jed. And maybe at first, those words are like something in a different language, a tone poem without any concrete significance. Maybe it takes a minute for you to remember what pregnant means, and a minute longer to realize how it applies to Anne, how it applies to you, and then maybe your first ridiculous thought, even before I'm going to be a dad, or we're so much older than I thought we'd be, is we should call him Brian. I had an uncle named Brian. It's a good name. And then maybe you cry, because everything is so big, and the whole shape of the world has changed. Again, Ryan's like 24, so this is a really, really old memory, but Alex can still access it. And not only can she understand how people feel, she can gain access to experiences that she might never have too. Like, she's not a parent right now, but it's like she knows what it's like to be a parent. Anne, Jed's wife, Ryan's mom, where did she go? Oh yeah, I guess we never really learned about that, huh? I just thought maybe she wasn't in the picture. I mean, Ethan's dad is not here, so... Okay, when we come back, we will move on to chapter 2 then. 